Hello everybody, DTX720 here. We're about to watch this Mr. Sakurai Presents video. Sadly, it has already been spoiled for me because for some reason I didn't wake up early at 7 o'clock in the morning to be that much surprised. But, let's get right into it. <laughs> it's three houses. The time has finally come to unleash the forbidden spell of Zaharas upon our enemies. <laughs> what were you thinking? Charging right into an enemy's trap. As you and I are one, I too am trapped within this void. In time, our hearts and minds will cease to be. Are you prepared to die? I can't believe Sakurai did this to us. I thought as much. I also do not wish to die. And yet... There is no other choice. You must join Smash. What? What does that have to do with anything? Join Smash Brothers already! What in the world are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for? Oh yeah, that's what we wanted. Violet, join so Smash House! Smash consumes even the darkness itself! <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, Sakurai. That's what we needed. More Fire Emblem. <laughs> oh man, I wonder. Uh, wonder what everybody's thinking about this. Oh my God. And sooner than expected. I see. Too many swordsmen are there. <laughs> you, you wield the sword as well. <laughs> you do. Oh my God. Oh look, she's a female. Oh my god, Sakurai is roasting so that us. Is how you plan to win the day? So be it. I reward your cleverness this time. Sakurai, Sakurai is destroying us. Oh. 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 That looks cool. Okay. Yes. Wait. What's going on now? Now what's happening? Yeah, what's happening now? Whoa! Whoa! Oh my god! Wait, do they? Do the two violets both have different move sets? Wait, no, they don't. Wait! Oh my god! Whoa! Okay, so this is better than it looked. This is this is better than it looked at first. Wow! Look at that! That's actually pretty cool. Can't even lie. And it has the whip. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, even though that was really cool, a lot of people weren't happy with that. Oh man. <laughs> oh crap, man. Oh look, he's putting up his poster right now. Look at him. <laughs> yes, there you have it. Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses is joining the battle. I love you, Sakurai. Fire Emblem Three Houses was released just last summer, so it's still very new. Even so, you'll soon be able to play as them in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Where's Rex and Pyro? This release is planned for January 20th. I'm just kidding. You'll have instant January 20th. If you have the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass. Nice. And it will also be available for purchase individually. Cool. Thank you, Sakurai. 
In case you're not familiar with Fire Emblem or Three Houses, I'll explain a few things, so don't worry. Yes. First off, what is Fire Emblem? We know Fire Emblem It's really hard to pronounce in Japanese. The producer said it's okay if I just say Fire Emblem. But when writing it, if you don't write Fire Emblem, the Fire Emblem police will come and get you, so please be careful. <laughs> The series' first entry launched in Japan on the Famicom in 1990. You could say it was a pioneer in the genre of tactical role-playing games. You might be wondering what makes it particularly tactical. Well, it's tactical in that it simulates combat. You can mm -hmm. think of it as moving pieces in a board game. Yeah, it's kind of... A game in which you advance units across a grid and battle. It's kind of like chess, if you want to say it like that. Yes, yeah. When we talk about tactical games of that era, there were lots of ones in which you command tanks, aircrafts, and so on. Mm -hmm. But Fire Emblem was unique because each unit was a specific character, yeah. sort of like in role-playing games. Plus, something made it stand out from other Nintendo products. Characters could permanently die. <laughs> That's pretty direct language though, so perhaps we should just say they're sleeping with the fishes. They're sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> Sakurai. But really, if a character fell in battle, you lose oh, god. Unit. They'd be gone and you couldn't use them again. Nice. Recent entries in the series maintain this concept of permadeath to some degree in classic mode and what have you. But a lot of games now allow strategic withdrawals, so to speak. In the older games, your units would really be gone, never to be mentioned again. Scary. The game's stories are told like chronicles of war, with increasingly distinct characters and engrossing scenarios. Oh, trust me, Sakurai. characters also appear in the Super Smash Bros. series. Oh, yeah. Six of the seven can use a counter oh, yeah. attack. Oh, yeah, we know that. Special. Yeah, we know that. Mm -hmm. There's actually a reason for this. When I was considering how to incorporate Fire Emblem Fighters into Super Smash Bros. Melee, I thought it might be interesting to reflect the turn-based nature of the original game. First comes your opponent's turn. They attack and you counter. Next comes your turn. Yeah. That's smart. And now, Fire Emblem Three Houses is the 17th game in the series. <laughs> People who aren't Japanese in particular might be thinking, 17 games? There are that many? Mm -hmm. It's a well, lot of games. If you include Fire Emblem Heroes in the remakes, but you don't include the Satellaview game, Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE, and Fire Emblem Warriors, then it comes out to 17 games. Let's try saying them in the Fire Emblem Can You Say It Challenge. Can you say it challenge? I'll give it a try. <laughs> There you go, 17. Oh, and that's the three. It was three houses. Ah. So you saw how I was counting in a weird way, right? I was counting in binary. This is zero. Fold this here and you get one, and then you get two. Then 2 plus 1 equals 3, so this would be 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. What and the hell, Sakurai? Add 1 and you get 17. Sakurai! Awesome, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty crazy that you, you did that, bro. Up to 31 on one hand. And if you use both hands, you can count all the way up to 1,023. I didn't think you were going to teach us binary here, Sakurai. If you've given up I'm amazed in a tatami mat, you could always give it a go. <laughs> what is Fire Emblem Three Houses? In Everybody Japanese, knows what Fire Emblem Three Houses is. Bereto, and the female version is called Bereto, but in English they share the same name, Violet. Violet becomes a professor who ends up leading one of three academic houses. Once you've chosen a house, you guide them through their school life and, well, you end up fighting the other houses. Uh -huh. After a certain incident, five years pass, and you meet up with your grown-up students to battle against the other houses in their regions. It's a very sad game in which your former allies become enemies, turn hostile, and try to kill you. Wow. To understand the concept of Fire Emblem Three Houses, I played an early version of the game before its release. 
I've done the same thing before, with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, for example. Cool. Because I couldn't wait until launch to experience it, or we'd have never made it in time. Mm -hmm. For that title, I borrowed an early version of the game for two days, ran around all the areas, saw the ending, and realized for the first time, hmm, I guess we can't really have Breath of the Wild's Princess Zelda as a fighter. <laughs> I did the same this time, but with there being three houses and multiple endings, it was really hard to get a feel for it. Yeah. And of course, there weren't any walkthroughs I could reference. Mm -hmm. The game has multiple routes and the outcome of each is very different. Your experience will vary depending on the route you choose, and many of the characters you meet will adopt different roles in the story. I'll try to avoid spoilers when I'm talking about the fighter. I hope you'll understand. I'm actually surprised that the Before last character was the first party character. That when Everybody else was third party. Showcase video, I mentioned that it was recorded a month in advance. But this time, we have to account for the holidays and such, so we're filming two months in advance of this video's release. Oh wow. Right now, it's actually November. <laughs> Neat. Therefore, some of what I'm about to show you might differ a bit from the finished version. As always, I'm using a special in-game camera and such for demonstration purposes. Here I go. Nice, sucker! Let's see it. Challenger Pack Five, Byleth. Fire him three hands to charge the battle. So this is our new fighter, Byleth. Sadly, they're lacking in mobility. It's maybe a bit better than Robin's, but that's about all you can say for them. Okay, Those they're not their strong point either. They're pretty damn slow. Thing. But actually, you could say that they're distance demon. A distance demon. The hero's relic they use changes depending on the direction you input with the stick. Each of the hero's relics is a weapon that appears in Fire Emblem Three Houses. They look like bones, and there's a reason for that. First, let's talk about the weapon Byleth uses for upward inputs, the Sword of the Creator. The Sword of the Creator here is Byleth's default weapon. They use it for flurry attacks and tilt attacks, such as down tilt attacks, where it takes the form of a whip. They also use the sword for dash attacks and other moves. For their up smash attack, they'll whip the sword upward to launch enemies in the air. That's pretty cool. For their up air attack, they'll wave the whip sword overhead. The hit detection for this attack lasts for a relatively long time. The up special move is really something. The sword extends like this, allowing you to do things like this. Whoa. That's it crazy. was pretty terrifying how I knocked him into the air with that attack. And in addition... Oh wow, you can like jump off of him. Look at that. Things like this. That said, you awful launch things. opponents upward until their damage reaches a certain percentage. Exceed that percentage and you'll need to be careful. You may find it helpful <laughs> to mid-air dodge. I've already shown this, but you can also use it to latch onto edges. Mm -hmm. So that's the up special. Now for the sideways inputs. This is Erdvar, the same name as the weapon from Celtic mythology. Bam! First, we'll go through the forward and back air attacks. As you can see, they have a long reach. Like so. Marth's air attack keeps opponents in check too, right? If Byleth does the same thing, you'd win out, so you should be able to beat it. Next, the side smash attack. This also has a long range. It'll connect even from here. Wow. He is a distance demon. Holy crap. Also, if you add an upward tilt, it will be stronger. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. And if you've knocked an opponent down, the side attack won't hit unless you add a downward tilt to aim for them. Neat! By the way, the tip of the lance is more powerful. Okay. The shaft part is weaker. So it's not suited to close combat. It won't deal much damage, and it won't launch opponents far. So you should try to hit it at long range. 
you want to hit with the blade part aimed upward. Neat. Or downward in this case. Next, the side special move. Byleth will simply swing the lance like this, but again, it has excellent reach. For example, even when your opponent is at this distance, it'll still hit. Wow. It's pretty cool. Actually, you can do a smash attack to charge forward a little. Like this. But as you'd expect, it can be easily shielded, so be careful. Easily shielded, Use it okay. Mid-air and you'll carve up a large area. Nice! Returning to the side air attacks from earlier, they have great horizontal reach, but they lack verticality. So, this complements it well. Although, you'll be vulnerable when you land. Okay. Now, for the downward inputs. For these, Byleth will use an axe called Emir. Emir. It's named after a weapon that appears in Ugaritic myth. First, the down air attack. It really is strong. You can try for a meteor effect with this attack. Okay. Next is the down smash attack. A heavy swing of the axe back and forth. As you can see, it has a great deal of launch power. Cool. And for the down special, Byleth channels all their energy into a devastating strike. Bam! It's a bold move, similar to the Falcon Punch, but here's what makes it different. When readying the move, there's a super armor effect. Oh, okay. So it'd be better to run. Withstand an attack. It'd be better to run from so it. You know, if you execute a Falcon Punch at about the same time, it plays out like this. Wow, that's a trip. It's a bit slower than the Falcon Punch, but due to the super armor effect, you have the advantage. That's cool. Unless you get grabbed. Unless you get grabbed, okay. <laughs> Another notable aspect is that it lets you pass through platforms. While you're charging up, you can breeze past platforms like this to reach a lower area. That's it won't cool. Let you jump, but you could use it as a surprise attack. Also, you can turn around during the move. The swing takes a while, so if an opponent runs behind you during the move, you can quickly change direction. <laughs> Even though it can be hard to land a hit with this move, it can be really effective when used against a group of opponents. Bam! Look at that! Plus, even if you fail to land a direct hit, any opponents on the ground nearby will still be launched a little. <laughs> it's as if the quaking of the ground launches them. By the way, earlier I talked a little bit about the other Fire Emblem characters' moves. I don't recommend using this down special against fighters from the Fire Emblem series, because you'll just get loads of counters. It hits with that much power in a single attack. <laughs> Counters can actually multiply the power of blocked attacks, and using easily anticipated attacks like this could just get you hit by counter after counter. Okay. Next, we have the neutral moves. The bow you use is called Fail Not, which shares its name with the bow from the Knights of the Round Table. Fail it Not. It only appears in a few neutral moves. You've got the neutral air attack. This attack is similar to a move of Pitts and other fighters like him. It lets you spin the weapon around. It's also easy to create certain combos with it. Okay. And with the neutral special, you'll let loose an arrow. It seems pretty straightforward, right? But there are a few noteworthy aspects to this bow. First, the biggest difference between this bow and Lynx is that once you enter the command, you can keep charging until it's ready. You can't release it partway through the charge, so when it does fire, the arrow travels at high speed. It's also very powerful. Okay. That said, you can still cancel out of the stance using the shield button. You can also change direction while in the stance. It works up until this point, but if you keep holding the button, you'll unleash Oof. a powerful arrow that looks like a beam of light. Wow, that's cool. You can perform this move by keeping the button held down. You charge up power like so, charge a bit more, and then fire. <laughs> That's cool. But again, you'll need to take care when using this move. 
For one, when you've powered up the move to its max, there's no way to cancel out of it. Not even with the shield button. In other words, you're committed to firing it. Alright, Sakurai. So you see, a situation like this is pretty terrible. Ooh, yeah it is. I can see that. Once you've entered the stand, you won't be able to do anything. <laughs> Which means it's quite the risky attack okay. to against fighters who have a move with a reflector effect. But you so Byleth, aim into the fray. Byleth is, looks to be a very high risk, high reward, man. Deal a sudden blow to Super opponents. high risk, high reward. So you need to think carefully when using this projectile weapon. That's crazy. Byleth's final smash is called Progenitor God Ruptured Heaven. In the original game, Progenitor God Ruptured Heaven. Bam! That was pretty cool. As you can see, you team up with the mysterious Sothis and launch an attack together. That's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, now, I'm actually pretty happy variation. with this. This is pretty cool. It's set up so that the default and odd-numbered color variations are male, while the even-numbered ones are female. However, the third, fourth, and fifth That's colors cool. are, as you can see, reminiscent of the house leaders. Mm -hmm. Those of you who played the original game will of course understand what I'm referring to. The sixth color is based on Sothis, who you just saw earlier. Sothis. And the seventh and eighth variations have a different hair color, which is based on based on something that occurs in the course of yeah, the original yeah, yeah, game's yeah. story. I know. <laughs> Did we see this variation in the final smash? He doesn't want to spoil it. <laughs> he doesn't want to spoil it. Edelgard, so those other three were Edelgard, Dimitri, and Next, I don't remember I'll the Edelgard's the name. Stage. For this one, we of course tried to recreate the place where you spend most of the game. Garrig Mach Monastery. Let's see. This is how Garrig Mach Monastery is laid out in the original game. Mm -hmm. From these, we chose to have it cycle through the marketplace, reception hall, bridge, and cathedral, all in one stage. Okay. It's the type of stage that rotates through different areas, such as these four. Let me introduce each of the guests that appear in these four areas. Okay. The first area is the marketplace. I think this is where a lot of people come to do their shopping. The guests that appear here are students of the Blue Lion's Look, house. Look, there he is. Dimitri, Dimitri. Daddy, <laughs> and Ingrid. Not Dimitri, Dudu, or Ingrid. Their names are a bit difficult to say. They're largely from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Since it's a kingdom, that means they have a monarchy. For that reason, I guess you could say Dimitri is the future king. He had quite the difficult life and may or may not end up with just one eye. He's an unfortunate one, that one. <laughs> may or may not end up with just one there eye. Are vendors on either side. <laughs> That's funny. In the original game, these are important booths where you buy all sorts of things. But uh, here you can break them, you see. <laughs> yeah, we'll just if you do break get them, rid of those. The stage will expand to the left and right. Neat. I wonder where people will buy their supplies now. <laughs> and in the background, you can see the gatekeeper. Okay. You often pass through this area in Fire Emblem Three Houses, and you end up talking to him a lot. Moving through these areas is possible thanks to this mysterious platform. Whoa. Just when it seems like you've come to a stop. Oh, that's pretty cool. You'll come crashing back down. I like broken that. through the ceiling and slammed into the building. That's pretty cool. That looks really cool. And the guests in the reception hall are Edelgard, Dorothea, and Petra of the Black Eagles. Take note, it's not spelled Edelgard. They're from the Adresian Empire. <laughs> and as such, they embrace their military might. Yeah. That's where everybody Edelgard wanted it smashed. Edelgard is one of the characters who is central to the conflict. <laughs> But on the we got by the she'll go through some terrible ordeals. Yeah. You'll notice there are I'm happy with what we got. I I already know that a lot it's of people are not. I can already see that so many people are not However, happy at can't all. Actually reach it, even though it's their stage. You can reach it with other fighters though. It's kind of like little Mac. So, it's nice if you can work your way up there by getting lucky and being launched up or perhaps by using another fighter as a stepping stone. There we go. I made it. And you can knock it down. Cool. Also, you can break this table. 
<laughs> like so. Alright, thanks, Sakurai. Just like the sign that reads Fudin Kazan in the Suzaku Castle stage, it can break if you launch the opponent into it at close range. <laughs> That's cool. Next up, the bridge. I really like that. That's really cool. Degrees, how it's like, ee, the, like mystical platform, and, and it takes you over there quick. And it's not a traveling stage. It like takes you quickly. That's cool. It's similar to the bridge of Elden stage. Yeah, I could see that. The guests are from the Golden Deer. Claude, Hilda, Claude, and that's his name. They belong to the Leicester Alliance. Okay. Because it's an alliance of many noble families, you could say that they have a wide assortment of members. And Claude is the sharpest of the bunch. Incidentally, both Claude and Hilda are the names of characters that appear in Genealogy of the Holy War, the fourth title in the Fire Emblem series. I guess once you've reached the 17th game and are creating 40 characters for each new entry, you're bound to get a bit of name overlap. <laughs> the naming process must be tough. Yeah, hey, I bet. It looks like the Pegasus Knight is busy training. There's the Pegasus Knight over As there. For the bridge's design, it's just the long <laughs> pathway, plain and simple. You can expect plenty of blows to be exchanged at the edges of the screen. It's a walk off. You could also say it's a place where the fail not really shines. People in hate. This sense, I think it suits the Golden Deer perfectly. People hate the walk offs. Next. Wow, that's really cool. The last area is the cathedral. Only with some platforms you can pass through. The cathedral. The guests appearing in the cathedral are Seta, Flane, and Rhea. There's Seta, who appears to have an extremely strong bond with his sister, Flane. She seems to be under the protection of him and Rhea, who you can see fighting during the opening of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Okay. All three have character quirks related to their true identities. I feel that Flane might be saying shush at this point, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> This is a simple area. No spoilers, stage. damn it. Has are these platforms. Being the last area, it may be a place where some intense battles will be waged. <laughs> It'll cycle through each location in about two and a half minutes. Cool. Kind of like the stage morph thing in a way. Okay, today we'll have a tag team battle in Squad Strike with the DLC team pitted against Fire Emblem protagonists from throughout the ages. That'll give us precisely five players per side. All right, here we go, Joker. The five DLC fighters. Joker! Oh no, Joker. Hero. No! What are you doing, Sakurai? Gee, we really made a lot, huh? Banjo! <laughs> By now, I think you know what I'm doing. He's but basically, getting rid of them all. I'm trying to defeat all five opponents with just the professor here. Okay. But as expected, it's going to be a pretty tough battle, so I'm using anything I can get my hand on. Okay, Sakura, you do that. It's not going to land that easily. Battle! Uh -oh, Kill. This is bad. Benigans. I better keep my distance. I'll use this chance to attack. Got him. Bam, you got him. That's scary. He's invincible for a moment here. Lots of explosives. Out. <laughs> it's really cool to see Sakurai like flexing on us. Like he's just showing how great he is at his own game. Amazing. If I do this, like this, or like so. No anti-air, huh? There. The soccer ball connected. Oh, you got some sister of Anna good. Pokemon. There's mom. <laughs> There's mom. <laughs> You're in a good spot, mom. Get him out of here. Ah, uh, I shouldn't have taken that. Gardevoir. Well, I guess no one uses projectiles. At this point, it doesn't matter if Gardevoir's there or not. Get the final I feel smash. Like the enemy might get this smash ball. See, they got it. But they mustn't give up. Oh, there you go. Get him, Sakurai. The chance. <laughs> there you go. Damn, Sakurai's shield freaking broke ball. him. Yes, got it. Now, what are you charging up for? <laughs> Flex it on him, Sakurai. There's still more. 
Whack. Go on, you can take the hammer, but it's mine. Although, I'm scared I might get hit with a counter in this state. I hit him! <laughs> I was trying to fight using Vilas abilities alone, but what matters is that I won. <laughs> what matters is that I won, he says. It can be fun to play like this, especially in tag team, so I think it's a good idea to try imposing different types of challenges on yourself. The end. The end. <laughs> the end. Yes. Show us what crazy music you have in now, this. Now, about the additional music. Since it's from the Fire Emblem series, we'll be adding each of the new tracks to all the Fire Emblem stages. There are nice. already a lot of Fire Emblem tracks in the game. Our selection this time has been made taking those existing tracks into consideration. Eleven songs are being added. This includes an arrangement of the main theme in both Japanese and English. Nice. I hope you'll enjoy these as well. We're also adding in a new spirit board. <laughs> Just like always. Among some of the other popular characters. Cool. Sothis is legend class. Also, there's a new classic mode route, a heroic legacy, which is designed to let you enjoy classic Fire Emblem stages from throughout the series' history. All right. The final battle is against Master Hand and Crazy Hand, but you'll find that something pretty amusing happens, so look forward to that. Really? Can't wait to see that. Now for the Mii Fighter costumes. Please take a look. Okay, what Mii Fighter costumes are you going to hit us with, Sakurai? Whoa! Whoa! Altair from Assassin's Creed, what the fuck? That is crazy. Rabbits! Oh, so Ubisoft wanted to throw themselves in here? <laughs> the rabbits! What the hell? Oh my god. Mega Man X? There you are. We were waiting for you. We didn't know where you were, Mega Man X. Me costume. Mega Man Battle Network. Mega Man EXE. Nice. <gasps> Cuphead! Oh my god! Oh, that's so cool! Oh my god, that is so cool! And they added a music track with it! Oh my god, that is so cool! Holy crap! Those me costumes were amazing! That was so cool, wow! Oh my goodness, that was cool. Damn, they blew our minds with three of those. This time, we're releasing a Cuphead costume. Yeah! And for those of you who purchased the Cuphead costume, an additional song will be added. Nice! It's called Floral Fury, and it's the theme that plays when fighting Cagney Carnation. Cagney Carnation, yeah. I hope you enjoy these as well. Thank you, Sakurai. That was After cool. After costume, I recommend using the sharing feature. If someone has created a Mii Fighter, you can play using the costume it's wearing immediately after you download it. And now, on to the Amiibo. Nice. Yep. We've seen the them. They're coming out tomorrow, Samus aren't they? That's pretty good, doesn't it? Dark Samus and Richter are planned for release on Friday, January 17th. Mm-hmm. It's tomorrow. Lovely. And now, with the addition of Violet, the, the fighter blast is complete. Completely complete. It's complete. The lineup was Joker, Hero, nice. Banjo and Kazooie, Terry Bogart, Hell yeah. and Violet. Hell yeah. From more than 70 fighters, only five have been added. 
<laughs> but I must say, this game has always been an exceptional experience. And since the roster was already so large to begin with, right from the start, we intended to make the most out of the new gameplay mechanics and so on. Yeah. There really were a lot of new mechanics, weren't there? Yeah, there were. There was a lot when of cool we add stuff. A new fighter, we don't simply make their attacks or their movements a little different. Instead, we try to offer you a whole new style of play. Appreciate that, Sakurai. It gives us some difference. As I stated, we'll continue to release more DLC fighters down the line. Okay. I had thought that one or two might suffice, but, well, have a look. Have a look? Even more fighters in development. Another five. Six. Six. Another six. Oh man. Looks like there will be one more fighter than last time. <laughs> For this reason, one more than last time. The Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Fighters Pass Volume Two. Volume Two. Available for pre-purchase on the date shown, so please keep an eye out. Nice. And now that it's official, we intend to move ahead with development. Of course, like last time, the contents will remain unknown for now, and I'm personally very sorry that we have to release Fighters Pass Volume 2 when the details have yet to be revealed. <laughs> like last time, I'd be very grateful if, despite that, you would understand why and purchase yeah. it. Furthermore, the new additions have already been decided. They have. Even if I receive many requests regarding potential candidates on Twitter, I'm afraid it would be very hard to consider them. <laughs> Don't blow Sakurai up. Hope you'll look forward to it. Let's see what they are. They've all been We're decided. We're also a bonus with Fighters Pass Volume 2. Really? Last time, it was a Rex costume. But this time, here's what we have. Okay. It's a Mii Fighter costume for Mii Sword Fighter. The ancient soldier gear <laughs> from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. That's pretty cool. This will not be for sale individually, so it can only be acquired as part of Fighters Pass Volume 2. Well, that's cool. Lastly, it's been reported that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the highest selling fighting game in the world. Is it? Personally, I don't know if it counts as simply a fighting game, but I guess it's seen as a fighting game around the world. <laughs> Seems like Street Fighter 2 was in the lead for a while, but now Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has surpassed it in total sales. That's cool. Nice, However, sir. I'm not sure if this is accurate. Is there it? were five versions of Street Fighter 2, or six to seven if you really want to get into the weeds. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's the arcade versions and the 25 ports to other systems, so I don't know if that's been accounted for. <laughs> also, I don't know if that really qualifies as one game. It's up for discussion. So, okay. Stop being humble, Sakurai. So when it comes to a single piece of Just accept software, your reward. <laughs> like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is number one. Cool. Although, I still don't know if it can really be called just a fighting game. It's a deserving... It's deserving of number one. It's become more than a fighting game. Yeah, it's a sort celebration. Of celebration of gaming or something else entirely. Also, I feel a deep attachment to the five DLC fighters. <laughs> Do you? The first Fighters Pass just wrapped up, but it was decided that there would be more DLC. Which means, no breaks for me. Aww, Sakurai. I plan to keep working hard, so I hope you can continue to support us. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Sakurai. Oh, that was awesome. Alrighty. Well. Alright guys, well I guess that's gonna that's gonna do it for us. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you three thousand. What'd you guys think about that? I'm trying to end the video all quick, but whoa, just chill. What did you guys think of that? Let me know in the comments down below. I uh I really thought that was really cool. It is kind of a controversial choice on Sakurai's part because a lot of people, you know, talk way crap, mad crap about, uh, way crap. They talk mad crap about the Fire Emblem characters in Smash, but, uh, I think it was a good last choice. It was surprising. A lot of people thought it was going to be a third-party character of some kind. And 
you know what i'm i'm happy it was a really cool character looks like it plays cool byleth is nice and fire emblem three heroes is a really great game and a lot of people love it so they should respect it for that alone and not because it's another blue anime swordsman blue hair to anime swordsman don't be mean to sakurai appreciate what you got he's making another six for us so it's all okay i love you guys 3000 see you in the next one